Why India celebrate Republic Day on the 26th of January each year? Republic Day is a public holiday in India where the country marks and celebrates the date on which the Constitution of India came into effect on the 26th of January 1950. This replaced the Government of India Act 1935 as the governing document of India, thus turning the nation into a republic separate from British Raj. The constitution was adopted by the Indian Constituent Assembly on the 26th of November 1949 and came into effect on the 26th of January 1950. The 26th of January was chosen as the date for Republic Day as it was on that day in 1930 when the Declaration of Indian Independence was proclaimed by the Indian National Congress. India achieved independence from the British Raj on 15 August 1947 following the Indian independence movement. The independence came through the Indian Independence Act 1947, 10 and 11 Go 6 C30, an ACT of the Parliament of the United Kingdom that partitioned British India into the two new independent dominions of the British Commonwealth, later Commonwealth of Nations. India obtained its independence on 15 August 1947 as a constitutional monarchy with George VI as head of state and the Earl Mountbatten as Governor General. The country, though, did not yet have a permanent constitution. Instead its laws were based on the Modified Colonial Government of India Act 1935. On 29 August 1947, a resolution was moved for the appointment of Drafting Committee, which was appointed to draft a permanent constitution, with Dr. B. R. Ambedkar as chairman. While India's Independence Day celebrates its freedom from British rule, the Republic Day celebrates the coming into force of its constitution. A draft constitution was prepared by the committee and submitted to the Constituent Assembly on 4 November 1947. The Assembly met for 166 days in public sessions spanning two years, 11 months, and 18 days before adopting the constitution. The 308 members of the Assembly signed 200 copies of the document, one in Hindi and one in English, on 24 January 1950, after much deliberation and some changes. Two days later which was on 26 January 1950, it came into effect throughout the whole nation. On that day, Dr. Rajendra Prasads began his first term of office as President of the Indian Union. The Constituent Assembly became the Parliament of India under the transitional provisions of the new constitution. On the eve of Republic Day, the President addresses the nation. On November 25, 1949, in his final speech to the Constituent Assembly, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar remarked about the potential and pitfalls of life after January 26, 1950. 26 26th of January 1950, we are going to enter into a life of contradictions. In politics we will have equality and in social and economic life we will have inequality. In politics we will be recognizing the principle of one man one vote and one vote one value. In our social and economic life, we shall, by reason of our social and economic structure, continue to deny the principle of one man one value. How long shall we continue to live this life of contradictions? How long shall we continue to deny equality in our social and economic life? If we continue to deny it for long, we will do so only by putting our political democracy in peril. We must remove this contradiction at the earliest possible moment or else those who suffer from inequality will blow up the structure of political democracy which is assembly has to laboriously build up. The main Republic Day celebration is held in the national capital, New Delhi, at the Rajput, officially named, Kartavya Path, before the President of India. On this day, Ceremonious parades take place at the Rajput, which are performed as a tribute to India, its unity and diversity and rich cultural heritage. The Delhi Republic Day Parade is held in the capital, New Delhi and is organized by the Ministry of Defense. Commencing from the gates of the Rashtrapati Bhavan, the President's residence raising a hill on Rajput past the India Gate, this event is the main attraction of India's Republic Day celebrations and lasts for three days. The parade showcases India's defense capability, cultural and social heritage.
9 to 12 different regiments of the Indian Army in addition to the Navy, an Air Force with their bands march past in all their finery and official decorations. The President of India who is the Commander-in-Chief of the Indian Armed Forces, takes the salute. 12 contingents of various paramilitary forces of India and police forces also take part in this parade. The beating retreat ceremony is held after officially denoting the end of Republic Day festivities. It is conducted on the evening of the 29th of January, the third day after the Republic Day. It is performed by the bands of the three wings of the military, the Indian Army, Indian Navy and Indian Air Force. The venue is raised in a hill in an adjacent square, Vijay Chowk, flanked by the north and south block of the Rashtrapati Bhavan President's Palace towards the end of Rajput. The chief guest of the function is the President of India who arrives escorted by the President's bodyguard, PBG, a cavalry unit. When the President arrives, the PBG commander asks the unit to give the national salute, which is followed by the playing of the Indian national anthem, Janaganamana, by the army. The army develops the ceremony of display by the massed bands in which military bands, pipe and drum bands, buglers and trumpeters from various army. Regiments besides bands from the Navy and Air Force take part which play popular tunes like Abide With Me, Mahatma Gandhi's favorite hymn, and Ser Jahan Se Akcha at the end. One eve of Republic Day, the President of India distributes Padma Awards to the civilians of India every year. These are the second highest civilian awards in India after Bharat Ratna. These awards are given in three categories, viz. Padma Vibhushan, Padma Bhushan and Padma Shri, in decreasing order of importance. Padma Vibhushan 4, Exceptional and Distinguished Service. Padma Vibhushan is the second highest civilian award in India. Padma Bhushan 4, Distinguished Service of a High Order. Padma Bhushan is the third highest civilian award in India. Padma Shri 4, Distinguished Service. Padma Shri is the fourth highest civilian award in India. While being national honors, the Padma Awards do not include cash allowances, benefits, or special concessions in rail air travel. Per a December 1995 judgment of the Supreme Court of India, no titles or honorifics are associated with the Bharat Ratna or any of the Padma Awards. Honorees cannot use them or their initials as suffixes, prefixes or pre- and post-nominals attached to the awardee's name. This includes any such use on letterheads, invitation cards, posters, books etc. In the case of any misuse, the awardee will forfeit the award and cautioned against any such misuse upon receiving the honor. The decoration comprises a Sanad certificate issued under the hand and seal of the president and a medallion. The recipients are also given a replica of the medallion, which they can wear during any ceremonial, state functions etc., if they desire. A commemorative brochure giving out brief details in respect of each award winner is also released on the day of the investiture ceremony.